Hey everyone, making Sonic's gloves part two. We're gonna get right into it with continuing shaping his fingers, positioning them, and then finishing making his hand. So position and then shape his fingers. Put them next to his hand. Once the fingers are more or less shaped, select and extrude edge loops towards the hand. I have these last two fingers a little too long, so I'm just going to move them in towards the hand. And I think that looks pretty good. When you like the look of everything, hold shift and select all the fingers and the hand, and then hit Control J to join them all into one object. And now comes the exciting process of connecting everything together. This will be a good time to create an archive hand object, so name the hand if it isn't, and then duplicate an archive. Apply the subdivision modifier. How you set up your hand topology is entirely up to you. I'm going to leave it mostly as is, but just add a few more edges in here with J. Since applying the subdivision modifier, I have a lot more geometry that I can directly edit on the hand now. So I'm just going to start adjusting things here and there. Thank you. 
Mostly I'm just trying to smooth things out and make it look like a hand in the process. <laughs> Also, I think I can get away with dissolving some of these edge loops on the fingers if I slightly move things around. I'll probably need to add some more edge loops later while rigging to make sure the geometry deforms correctly, but we can figure that out while rigging. It's a problem for future professor. And then we can join the fingers together like so. I'm pretty sure the positioning is fine here, but I'm just going to move stuff around so that the faces aren't quite as bent. And the same with this one, which is in a little bit worse of shape, but still probably fine as is. And now finally we're going to connect the fingers to the hand. It's going to take a little bit more geometry, so to start with I'm going to add an edge loop in here. I'm going to also change up my edge flow a little bit here. And then using the knife tool, I'm going to cut in some edges on the hand to make the vertex count line up with the fingers. I'm going to start by adding some vertices for the vertices that are in between the fingers. And then up one edge loop, I'm going to add some zigzaggy cuts to line up with the center vertices on the fingers. And again, this is just one of the many ways to go about doing this. There are many, many ways. Thank you. 
Now select vertices in pairs, a hand vertice first, then a finger vertice. Use merge at last to merge on top of the finger vertice, and then just do this all the way around the hand. And now smooth everything out and adjust anything you don't like. When you like it, select All and Shade Smooth. Add a mirror modifier with the body as the mirror object. And now we can turn our other glove object on and assign a material to the gloves. Adjust on this object so that there's not as much clipping into the gloves, and here we go! Gloves done! That was pretty easy. I was going to talk a little bit about how weird modeling is. Because when you're modeling, just normally modeling, you redo things constantly. You're constantly just coming back and tweaking vertice placements and just like, this vertex needs to be a little up, this vertex needs to be a little bit down, I don't really like this connection, delete this whole hand, redo it, all that sort of stuff. But when you're filming it and you want it to be relatively concise, especially if there's like a, a new modeler or somebody who wants to learn is trying to learn from you making this thing, you have to not have that constant like flipping the camera and looking all over. I take an incredible amount of time just staring at everything that you do and then just being like, yeah, no, that's not working for me. Redo it sort of thing. But that isn't a good way to show how to tutorialize it. But it is important to explain during a tutorial at some point that I have made this model many, many times. That's why I know where I'm going to go with everything, and I have a relatively good idea of the connections already. So it looks really clean and like, you know, I'm just doing it for the first time, slapping this thing together and I know where all these vertices should go. But it is not a true telling of what modeling actually is. This is a good way to show somebody how to model, but modeling is a 
constant tirade of mistakes that you tweak just a little bit. So, never be afraid to just try something. You will, you'll end up with overlapping geometry or maybe multiple objects that you just have no idea where the one came from because you accidentally copied it or something. It happens all the time. Just learning how to fix those mistakes or figuring out from the get-go kind of what your idea is or making the model multiple times is how you learn. So watch the tutorials, learn everybody's different modeling styles, and then do what works for you and don't be afraid to make mistakes because we all make them constantly. I'm just not trying to showcase <laughs> showcase my mistakes. I'm trying to show you how, how to actually make the model and how I made the model. But it is a glorified version of such. And also, never be afraid to start. Just start something. Even if you don't want to make Sonic per se, but you just want to make something, maybe even have an original character, try making it 30 times. <laughs> just keep going. If you get stumped, come back to it later. Blender's amazing. And if you want to design things, this is the program. It's it's so good, you guys, and it's constantly getting better. So go out and model. Go out and learn how to model. Google things. <laughs> just. Just type into Google how to do this, right? We might not have the tutorial, but somebody probably does. So, find it. Learn. Explore. Make the things. It's so much fun. All right, weird rant over. Just thought I should, at some point, have a motivational speech about how fun Blunder is. I love you guys. Bye-bye.